Good day, I'm Stephen McHugh and this is your JIS News for Wednesday, September 7, 2022. The Jamaica Constabulary Force, JCF, along with other law enforcement partners, have seized 518 illegal firearms between January and August this year. The figure represents a 12% increase when compared to the same period last year. 9,082 rounds of ammunition were also seized during the period. Charges have been laid on 657 persons for illegal possession of firearms. While giving the update at the JCF's virtual monthly press conference on Tuesday, Police Commissioner Major General Anthony Anderson said the force will continue its multi-agency partnership and strong community engagements to achieve desired changes in communities. We will not be distracted or lose focus on our mandate to apprehend criminals, ensure public order and save lives. Meanwhile, with robberies and break-ins on the rise, the police commissioner said measures have been put in place to acquire mobility assets and train additional quick-response motorcyclists. These initiatives are just about coming on stream, and as the process continues, we are also employing technology and intelligence to target known perpetrators. Now, it's important to note that analysis of the data shows Robberies are down 22%, whilst break-ins are down 24% from pre-COVID levels. Still at that press briefing, Major General Anthony Anderson said despite the high levels of enforcement to restore public order on the roadways, the issuing of tickets has not changed the behavior of motorists. The police commissioner said between 2018 and August 2022, over 1.6 million tickets were written, of which less than 40% were paid, and the remainder of persons largely still have their licenses and continue to reoffend. To mitigate the negative results, the electronic traffic ticket management system will now generate an automatic warrant for unpaid tickets with past court dates. For tickets written prior to the electronic system, the police are working with the courts to get warrants for serial offenders, which will result in revoked or suspended licenses and prison terms. We expect that with the passing of the new road traffic regulations, persons who break the law will face greater penalties. Our presence on the roadways will only go so far, and as such, motorists must exercise due care and personal responsibility. We are also anticipating a robust public education campaign as the regulations come into effect. We'll lend our support to the Ministry of Transport in educating the motoring public. Commissioner Anderson was speaking at JCF's virtual monthly press conference on Tuesday. In other news, 6,000 primary and 3,600 infant schools will benefit from a supply of new furniture in the next two weeks. This will continue throughout the school year to ensure that all students are adequately accommodated for the new academic year. Minister of Education and Youth Favel Williams made the disclosure during Tuesday's Parliament sitting. We now have 10 schools in the furniture making business to supply our schools. Yes, um, to date 5,776 desks and chairs uh, have been distributed. 104 schools have benefited. Minister Williams says teachers will also receive 8,000 pieces of furniture to ensure a comfortable working environment. In addition, she indicated that a program is ongoing to treat furniture for termites. Meanwhile, Education Minister Favel Williams is pleading with parents to encourage their children to follow school regulations so that uninterrupted learning takes place. According to Minister Williams, rules are in place to maintain a standard of discipline. Speaking at the Franklin Town Primary School in Kingston on Monday, Minister Favel Williams said cooperation among the parents, teachers and staff is necessary for a successful school year. And so if the school says it's brown shoes, not black, we want you to make that investment on behalf of your child. If the school says a tie, please don't send your child without a tie. And finally, the Ministry of Justice has signed a Memorandum of Understanding, MOU, with the island's churches to undertake a two-day training session with its members. Under the MOU, the Ministry will lead a restorative justice training program, teaching alternative methods of settling disputes, ways to avoid reprisals, and reduce violence and abuse in the churches and communities. Portfolio Minister Delroy Chuck says the Ministry will continue its commitment to make justice accessible to all institutions, especially to the churches. I can assure you that this two-day program will really be transformative 
people will engage and become different persons because we have done it with teachers, students, community members, JPs, and it has been having an enormous impact on people's lives. In May of this year, the ministry forged a similar partnership with the Ministry of Education, where teachers and students were trained in restorative justice and alternative dispute resolution. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Stephen McHugh. Thanks for watching.